ICC, it automatically pulls in the county, the property ID number, uh, the street, uh, zip code, geo code, just a lot of information, the legal description, which is fantastic. You don't have to manually type all of this stuff in. Uh, the legal description with regard to the section and range, township, all of that is just automatically pulled in. Then we've got the street number. If we had a pre-direction, so our street name is 3436 Crosswater, but if this were Northeast Crosswater, for example, then I could enter it here. Uh, and if the direction comes after the street name, so if it was 3436 Cross Crosswater Drive West, then I could enter that here. If there's an apartment or unit number, I could enter that. You notice that these are not in bold type, so they're not required fields. The required fields are in the bold font and they're underlined. So that lets us know the information that we have to enter. And you can see the city, the state, the zip code, the geo area, and the zoning code are pulled in automatically for us. The development is not. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can just click right in here and you can go ahead and begin to type that name in, or you can click this pick list right next to the development field. Uh, this box will open up for you. See that the developments are in alphabetical order. So if I just begin to type in whatever my subdivision is, as you can see, it's gonna start to pull up. I typed in Palm, it, it begins to pull up all of the subdivisions that begin with Palm. Our subdivision, let's see, I believe it's in the Willows. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put Willows. And then you see that the sub condo name, the drop down is only gonna give you the subdivision or condo names that are associated with that development. And so you would just click the drop down to select the correct one. In this case, Willows is the only one. And then you see the subdivision code even pulled in for you from the public records. Building design, this is a single family home, but you see you have all of the building types there available to you. Uh, builder product, this is just, if, if, if it's a brand new construction home, you would enter yes here, because then you would enter the builder name. But because I'm choosing no, had I entered yes, then the builder name would be required. But because I entered no, the builder name field is not going to be required. There is no building number and that's not a required field. Total floors in the property, it's a single floor, uh, so just a, a one-story home. Total building floors, just gonna go ahead and, and enter information. Unit floor, these are really not uh, applicable, but you just want to enter the information because it is required to satisfy that. Now, I say that and I want to be really careful because we don't ever want to enter information that is incorrect just to satisfy the field requirement. But a unit floor, for example, I put in a zero because it's not a unit. Units in building, it's a single family home, so it's okay to say one and it's okay to say one for units in, in complex because it's, it's not a complex if it's a single family home. In fact, I'm just gonna enter a zero there. Now the legal description was automatically pulled in and it, all, you know, it, it, it will be for you. And legal unit, this is, would be your unit number. So if this were unit 105, for example, if I was entering a condo, that's what I would be entering. But because this is a single family home, I'm just going to enter a zero to satisfy that field. Now we're going to move to the top of the form and we come to status type. You see that the, all the different choices, assignment of contract, and then we've got new construction, pre-construction, resale property, which is the choice that we're going to make or under construction. But while we're here, this is something that you would have learned about in your compliance class. And so I want to ensure that you uh, understand all about uh, construction specifically. 
when you're entering new construction, there are some very specific rules that you want to be sure and pay attention to. Pre-construction, pre-construction, in order to add a listing as a residential listing and call it pre-construction, a permit must have been pulled on the property, but no dirt has been moved yet. Under construction means that the per permit has been pulled, dirt has been moved, but no certificate of occupancy has been issued. And then new construction means that the certificate of occupancy has been issued and the construction is completed, but the property has never been occupied. So those are the different construction types. Now we have a resale property, so that's what we're gonna select. Uh, the list price, please be careful when you enter the list price. Now, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can call us and we can correct it because if you correct it, it will show that you had an increase or a decrease. Let's say you got carried away with your zeros and you listed your $400,000 house for $4 million and then you recognize your mistake and you come back in and correct it it's going to look like a price decrease from 4 million to 400,000. Give us a call. And now we've got bedrooms. So this field should look familiar from your search field. So this is where you're entering. Maybe it's two bedrooms with a den or it's a three bedroom property, whatever the case may be. So we're going to enter that it's three bedrooms. We're going to enter that you see two full baths was pulled over automatically. Half baths was not pulled over, so we need to enter a zero. And we see that the living square footage was pulled in from the public records along with the total square footage and ceiling fans. You had that profile sheet when you, with you when you went out on the listing appointment, then you would know the number of ceiling fans available in the home and you could enter that number here. And this is where you're going to enter, whether it's furnished, this is a, a required field. So whether it's unfurnished, furnished or partial, whatever the case may be, cable available doesn't mean that it's connected. It just means that it is available to be connected in the community. So um, we're just entering whether that's true or not, yes or no. There is no elevator in our single family home. Uh, we do have a two car garage, so we're going to enter a two for garage spaces and our garage is attached. Uh, we have no carport spaces, so I don't have to enter anything for carport description because I entered a zero here. Uh, rear exposure and you may be going, oh my goodness, how am I supposed to know that? Well, check out this map over here. This map is uh, going to come in handy for a number of reasons. And you notice it says map not found. Every time you come in to enter a listing, it's always going to say map not found. Select get latitude and longitude from address. So if I click on that, you'll see that that pin is dropped. Now, don't assume that the pin is dropped correctly just because it pulled from the tax records. We can click on that parcel and we see that it is correct. 3436 Crossrider Drive. You can click here and you're gonna need these in just a moment to get the lot dimensions. Clicking on lot dimensions, we can see that we have 50 feet across the front, 50 feet across the rear and 120 feet on both sides. And we're, again, we're gonna need that in just a moment, but I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit because the pin is not always dropped correctly. I have seen the pin dropped out here, maybe in the pond or the lake, right? I've seen it dropped in the Gulf of Mexico. Rare that it's completely wrong, but sometimes it's wrong. You can reset the pin. So if you ever need to reset the pin, you can click on all of these parcels and you notice that it gives you the address for each one of the parcels. So you can click on the parcels to find 
the correct address. Now I'm just going to zoom back in. You can click on reset pin. And once you do that, you can come to your pin and you can click and you can drag. You can drag this pin to any of the parcels. The correct placement for a pin is the center of the roof of the property or the structure, depending on whether or not you have vacant land. So just the center of the roof of the structure or the center of the property. And then you just want to select done. But before we do that, we want to know our rear. We're faced, this is north up here, right? We've got north, south, uh, east, west. So our rear exposure is going to be sort of a northeasterly direction. But don't forget, you want to make a note of those lot dimensions. Right? So I'm going to click cancel there. And our rear exposure is northeast. The year built was pulled in automatically. And before I forget my lot dimensions, I'm going to jump down here where it says lot size. You see the acres was automatically pulled in. Before I forget my lot dimensions, you can jot them down so you don't have to skip spaces. But I'm going to go ahead and enter that. It was 50 in the front. It was 50 in the back. 120 on the left and 120 on the right. This is required and it's very important and you don't want to enter the wrong information here. Let's just jump back up here to pets. Now, if you're in an HOA or a condo, there's probably going to be pet policy, right? So this is where you are going to enter that information. If approval needed, you would say yes with approval. Maybe pets aren't allowed at all. Maybe there are limits, but approval's not necessarily needed. You're going to select whatever, whatever applies. I'm gonna go ahead and just say no approval needed. You're gonna enter HOA or the condos, the maximum allowable pet weight. So whatever, whatever they say, you know, the pet can't weigh more than 80 pounds, whatever the case may be. So you would put 80 pounds. The number of pets that the owner may have, the new owner, if there are any breed limits. So this is where you might say, sometimes they'll name specific breeds and you would just put no, and then whatever those breeds are. And then any other information that you might need to enter. If you select yes on any of these, so if you say limits or you say with approval, then these fields become required even though they're not underlined and in bold print. So you're going to find that throughout the listing form that uh, even though a field isn't bold and underlined, it will be, be required based on the information you enter in a previous field. This is where we would enter a virtual tour link. So if you're using a virtual tour, you can enter the link for that virtual tour here. If you have two tours, you can enter the second link here. <clears throat> Keep in mind, like you learned in your compliance class, that you are never allowed to brand any of your listings or any of your listing information which means that if you enter a virtual tour, you want to ensure that it is an unbranded virtual tour. The owner's name is required, but awesomely, it was pulled in from the public record, so we don't have to enter that. Ownership description. So here we have a single family. So you know what the condo is. The co-op, that's going to be your uh, those mobile home communities. Those are your co-op communities. Fractional ownerships. If you've got people that own portions of the property based on a percentage, this is a single family home. So that's what we're going to enter here. If you know the names of the schools districted to the property, then you can enter them here. Check with your broker 
Uh, some brokers will tell you don't enter the schools. Now scrolling back up and I measurement SRC, it's source. It's asking you where you got the measurements. We are going to select the property appraiser's office because we filled our listing from Realist Tax and Realist Tax pulls that information from LEPA. So that's why we can select property appraiser's office. The same thing with the measurement source, the total area that came from the property appraiser's office. Now, of course, if some of these others apply, then you want to enter whatever applies and you want to do that. Lot dimensions, LEPA, for the, the public records to get those exact lot dimensions. So for that reason, we can once again say property appraiser's, appraiser's office and the same thing with the lot size. It automatically pulled in from the property appraiser. So that takes care of the general tab. So we're moving back to the top of the listing and we're just gonna work through each one of these tabs.